brand new record. This is the first again on our show here. I understand that you have made uh, 45 records before. Yes, we have. your mind on what you're doing. How many people you see that? Good <laughs> Our parents were sort of like idols to us. So we sort of mimic a lot of what had been their experiences. In the black community, it was very important for my parents to uh, present a strong family unit in a positive way. I have always loved singing. I've started my own group, the Traveling Tone. Time went by, I started a family. My children, when they got old enough to talk, they could sing. I taught them to sing. Their mother had a beautiful voice, and we sang. When we first started off, as we were kids, I used to come up, I crawl up behind Daddy. My mother and Dad, they trained us three-part harmony. And this way they trained us, all of us had different songs we could lead. Being able to travel and meet people and go to places that would not be possible if you were not actively engaged in the gospel. Always believe and done things on a professional level. This being the Bible Belt, there's gospel programming going on when you don't have any soul blue programming going on. So gospel is everywhere, traditional gospel. Here in Memphis, WLOK, 30, 40 years ago, they played soul blues and gospel. But now it's just totally old gospel station and we have, it's about five other stations here in the city of Memphis that just play gospel only. to say to the peoples out there in TV land, my name is Willie Scott, and I'm the manager of the one and only Birmingham Spiritus. I've been in the Birmingham Spiritus ever since I was about in the sixth grade. People of the world. Base count. You got a the roll behind there. You got some everything back there. Man, this stuff is Children pretty old now. Huh? That was around about the time the Jackson 5 had caught fire. They were doing rock and we were doing gospel. In the world. My mom told me that she didn't want me singing blues and singing gospel too. I wasn't going to do but one. I chose gospel. Mississippi, well, that's definitely the heart of the gospel. Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. I started liking the clothes and stuff, and I started going to the markets, and I decided I want to go into something of my own and do my own business. My name is Annie Conway and I used to be Annie Brown. So we used to go around saying in people yards and stuff and 
we'll just start singing and they'll have little guitars and start playing it. As we got older, probably about 10 years old, we started going to the church and we started doing music there and singing God Praise. So I used to walk down the street from my mother's house and go to the store and I used to talk to Jesus. I used to, you know, just talk to him and have a conversation, personal conversation with the Lord. And he started dealing with me with songs. You know, and I thought of saying, well, brother, let's do this. So they get the music together, and we'll, they'll get the guitars, and, and I just thought the word just started coming. Now, if you ask me how we started, I would say, we started at a club at the upper room. <laughs> and my father asked me, you understand, we were probably two, three years old. He asked us to get on the stage to dance. Hey, I got on the stage and I began to dance and all the people began to throw money. <laughs> and I remember, you know, they was throwing so much money and if I quit dancing, I thought they was gonna stop throwing the money because I wanted to stop and pick the money up. But I said, I'll keep dancing and maybe they'll keep throwing it. So I just kept dancing, I kept dancing. I saw that we became a group. We went from being known as a family to being entertainers. My parents were a part of a lot of the civil rights movement. And we learned that from being able to travel and visit and be among different, different cultures, right. different faiths, um, and different economic levels, different political views. A lot of the messages of our songs came from oratative way of being able to communicate the positive message we wanted to get out. People will bring the kids out to see, you know, a positive example. And dad and even and mama, they always raise us to be a positive example in the community. He was an upstanding citizen, one of the pillars here in the Walton County area. We had an opportunity to do a album with Savoy Rack. And one of the agents told me they would put me on a label that the whole world could hear me. I was looking for a group that was going to be able to travel and go professional. And I picked them guys. Now, so secondly, I was the, the mechanic. <laughs> I worked on the mics, <laughs> stage manager. Been pastoring 30 years, a uh, civil rights activist. For the issues of the time, I think we covered every issue, be it socioeconomic, political, spiritual. You can find something relative in our news. So we were very fortunate that we were able to record, make that next step in identifying yourself through recording. See, if you, wouldn't, if you don't record, there's no record of you. I need you, Jesus. Like I said, starting off as a songwriter. I wrote song for Wilson Pickett, the staple singers, uh, Bobby Bland, Johnny Taylor, Clarence Carter, you got to remember, you had the plain, traditional, hard, stomping gospel. And you also had gospel then began changing back in the 70s, which they could start calling the middle of the road with the changes that was taking place in America at that time. When Pop came along with Staple Singer, he brought forth a change in the gospel music. The Staple Jimmy, because we learned Staple Singers. <laughs> We got it from the staple singers. We used to go to school and, and they used to have like a little title show. And we used to sing. My brother used to run a guitar 
And I used to do a lot of the staple songs. He'd be like the old man staple, and I you know, try to act like Mabel. Pop had a tremendous effect because they had a different sound. He incorporated that Mississippi roots that he had. Like the staple singers, I'll take you there. That music transformed the industry totally. We call those songs back then, middle of the road. We all began to write songs like that. That was good for everybody that was doing it. You had Stax that was doing it. You had Motown that was doing it, Philly International, Savoy, Ace, even Malico was doing it. Everybody was doing it back then because you feel like the audience had changed. Why don't you let your light shine? Let it shine on your children. Make life better for them. I thought of it as a gospel album. But I felt like the commercial world would reach out for it. That yeah. album, you know, both of those albums so good. And for the 70s mm-hmm. to have a, a album or anything that, you know, you could sell for $5 a pop, mm-hmm. you understand? And we did most of the sales ourselves. So it was like uh, a pop album because at that particular time to, you know, if you could go out and sell two or 300, 500, albums at one concert for five dollars a piece that was a lot of money so i guess you would say it was a a, a pop album because it took it to another level you know this is a hustling beast and you can't sit back and rely on the record company to do it all and you don't do anything for yourself the gospel acts that are hustlers not only do they have themselves but they have the company by doing so we put up posters they appetizers on the radio on the TV, that's how everybody knows that you come to town. We sold pictures, we sold records, flashlight, holy Bible, t-shirts, belt buckles. We just had a whole lot of things to sell to the people. We traveled a lot. We pushed our album out of sale. My father wanted to make sure that we were still relevant and and, uh, where we still embrace the older music. He was always introducing new things to broaden our uh, audience. Because the the church was going through this turmoil of whether can we accept this new music or not, the song Sign of the Times became an anthem. Starvation claims the lives of many. Spiritual. We'll move on down and sing another song for you, one that we love to sing everywhere we go, because if it had not been for Jesus, we wouldn't be here today. Listen, if you please. That was the first album that we had ever recorded. Thank you, Lord, for one more day. I feel very fortunate to have done that. And uh, I got about maybe 10 more years to um, really show the world really what we can do as a group and sing. Keep looking up.
children and my daddy had to work you know day and night you know just about to take care of his family you know it wasn't a lot of money back then most time we just taking one day at a time you know had enough just to eat so we most were just pinning leaning on the Lord for whatever we have my daddy was a singer he used to sing in a group we started off singing because of him the church tell other churches and the word got around, that, oh, we're gonna be at this certain place. And somebody had told my brother about my show and they heard us singing and they asked us to, you know, to come and do an EP with them and we did that. I was young and, and we'd never been to places like that and it felt great because I felt like that uh, I had something off of what God gave me. That got us really where we at today. Programs and traveling on the road, Minnesota, Chicago, and Nashville, Memphis, different places that we've never been. I got three girls. So with three girls and my two sons and my husband. My family is my man now. I was 12 and I just started singing. And I used to love the movement and the, and the feeling and, and the dancing. I come from the old school, and I come up in the church myself, so I know I sung in the church and all this when I grew up, so I know about that, and that's soul for this. Now, you got to hit me here. If you don't hit me there, then it's not there. It's, it's not there for me. But um, I will say this, this is what the lecture was in 46, what the black people were lynched in Walton County, just the area right here. In the 70s, when I wrote Sign of the Time, it was relating to things that went on. What happened to humanity, people have power to change things, but they don't have the heart to do it. And that is this reality today. People that don't have love for each other, don't have the heart to reach out 
and they'd rather see you suffer than to be happy. Dear co-worker in Christ, we hope the year 87 bring you more love, peace, and joy. I am writing you this letter for a booking in your city. Let me hear from you soon. Sincerely yours, Willie R. Scott. Love for your sisters, love for your brothers, and you will never be alone. Just a little love. Just a little love. As I had ended up in the gospel, and I enjoyed some uh, very colorful peoples in this gospel music, I must agree. Smile, yeah. Tiger. <laughs> It made me feel good because I feel like my living not in vain. In lifetime, we need, you know, we need encouragement. I love people, I love God, and I want to see people blessed. for the Birmingham Speedy that we enjoy being here and we hope that we get a chance to come back real soon.